Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Hope all of you are doing very well today. So the topic for today's session will be data types. So in my earlier sessions, I have already explained how to create a new case type in Pega. So today I'll be showing you how to create data types. But uh, before getting started with the development, uh, let me first try to define and explain what exactly is data type in Pega. So data type is a rule category in Pega that helps us create and manage all the data that we are going to use in our application. So if I take the example of this application, so this is a training application. So if you remember from my previous sessions that we are trying to build a training case type, this case type will allow students or users to do the enrollments to participate in different kind of trainings. Once the enrollments are done, then there will be a set of team who will review the enrollments. Um, and post review, there will be the actual trainings that will be conducted. The students who have enrolled will take part in the training. And then once the training is successfully conducted and completed, then there will be email certificates that will be emailed to the um, people who have basically taken part in the trainings. So certificate, something like certificate of completion. So that will be done in this particular step. Now, this is the micro journey or this is the case life cycle journey that we have thought of now in order to implement this end to end there there will be need to create data types okay so one such need would be to have a student data type so if you consider stage one what if we had a requirement that um when the when when an already enrolled student tries to log in into our application so his data should already be pre-populated in the screen and we should not be forcing him to re-register or re-enroll however if there is a student who has not yet enrolled so he should be given the given a register button basically or an enroll now button so uh, to achieve this requirement first thing that i need to do is i need to create a data type called student in this data type i can have fields like student name email phone age and location let let us go with these five fields for now okay so how do we create a data type in Pega? So on the left navigation, if you see there is data type tab. So first we'll click on this. And then from this icon, when you click on it, you will get an option to add a data type. So if you're creating the new data type, you will be selecting this option. Or if you want to add an existing data type into this list, that is also possible. So first let's go with the new data type. So in the label, we will give the name. Let me call my data type as students and we can give a description. If you expand this advanced option, you will see the class, the data type class. Now here you need to decide if you're going to place your data type into your implementation layer or organization layer. If you want this data type to be reusable and to be used, reused across the enterprise level. So then you don't need this application name over there. You can have it in the Z Corp dash data layer which will be your organization layer but if you are building if you see right this is the organization data class so if you want to build a reusable data type then you need to select the class like this or if you want to build a data type that is specific to your implementation layer then we can leave the earlier configuration whatever it was so that's the implementation class if you can see the description it says implementation data class so this is our implementation data class so we will try to build a data type called students in our implementation data class and then here you can choose the application layer and here you can choose the rule set. So all this uh, details looks fine to me. So I will just hit the submit button. Once we do this, it will take some time and it will create some rules and backend. Okay, so if you see now the data type student is created for me. And then the first rule that gets created is the class rule, of course. So let us try to open the class rule. So we will click on uh, this icon and then you can open the class record from here. So it will open the class rule for us. Okay, so if you see the class type is concrete and then we have not defined any keys yet. So that is why keys is not yet selected. I will show you how to add a key to the newly created data type. And then here is the um, inheritance basically. So how this class is going to uh, follow the inheritance is it going to be pattern first and then directed. So in directed, so then what is the, the class that we need to pick for the directed inheritance? So all those configurations are over here. Now let us go back to our data type and let us try to add certain 
fields to it. So how do you add a field to a data type? So you see this add field button. So when we click on it, so it will give us a pop-up. So let me have the first field as student name. So the type of field will be text. So I will leave it like this. If you want to add multiple fields to the data type, you can select the submit and add another button. I will do that. Okay, so student name is added. Now let me add age. Okay, and age is the number. So I can change the data type from here. Okay, so if you click on this and if you click the down key, it will give you all the different type of properties that you can create. So I want to give the age as an integer. So I'll select integer, then submit and add another. So student name is done, age is done. Now let's go with phone. So again, this one, I have to change the type of the field. So I will give the type as the phone. Okay. And then submit and add another. Let's have email also. Let's pick the correct type of this field. So there is a type uh, email that is available that we need to use for the email type of properties that we are going to create. Okay, let me submit now. So once we do this, you see these are the four properties that I have added. Student name, which is of type text, age, which is of type integer, phone and email. And all these, if you go and check your class in the app explorer, you would be able to see that all these properties has been created for us in this class. So if we expand the data model and if we see the property uh, rule type, so you see all these four property gets created for us. Okay. Now, uh, next, let me show you how to configure the key for the class. So for configuring the key, you go to the records tab and you see this button called configure source. When we click on this, there will be a pop-up that comes for us and it will give us an option to add a key. So if you see this column use as key, so for whichever column you check this checkbox, that will become the key for this data type class. So again, um, if you remember the database concepts, so the key always, the table key or the class key always needs to be unique. So in this case, um, I don't find any of these uh, to be unique. So what I would do is uh, there is an out of the box property that Pega gives us, which is PYGUI ID. So you can choose this global unique ID. You can choose this as your class key. So we don't need to do it from here. You can do it from here also, but I would show you how to configure the key from the class role. So let me just um, cancel this for a moment and go back to the class that we have over here. So in the class, there is already an option automatically generate a unique ID for records for this type. So what we would do is we will select this checkbox and then we will save it. So if you see after selecting this checkbox, the class key has been automatically set to PYGUI ID. Now let us go to our configure source and let's see what has changed. So if you see now Pega has already added this PYGUI ID uh, property as the key for this data class. So I'll just go down and then see there are certain data pages that Pega creates for us. And then we will select the database like what would be the database for this particular table. So customer data is selected by default. And then these are the data pages that Pega creates for every single data type. Whichever you create in Pega, there will be certain data pages that Pega creates for us and the corresponding report definition rules. Okay, so everything looks fine. Now let me submit this. Okay, so there's a review screen which says that this is our properties. This is the key for our data type class that we have created. Okay, let's close it. And now let's go back and refresh the case type. Sorry, uh, the class role. Let me save it once. Okay, so the warning that we were seeing on top, that is gone now. So everything looks correct now. Um, next, I will show you how to add a record into the data type. So we have configured the source. So once we successfully configure the source, right, this particular portion of the data type records tab will enable. So I can add some predefined set of data into my data type. Let me give the email as this. Let me give the phone number. Okay, let me give some age, 25. And let me give some name. Let's say Ravi. Okay, so once we save this. So this is the record that is inserted into the data type. Okay, similarly, I can have another 
like three, four entries into the data type. And then using the data pages that Pega has created for us, if you go to the sources tab, you will be able to see that there are three data pages that Pega has created for us. So there is a list kind of data page, there is a saveable data page, and there is a um, page type of data page. If you, if you Let me try to open this and show each of these. So we can use these data pages that Pega has created for us into the UI if we want to show this uh, records, okay? So for example, D underscore student list, if you see this is one of the data pages that has been created for us, this will give us the entire list of all the records that is in our data type, okay? It will not take any um, parameter, it is just a plain, uh, if you open the data table editor report report definition rule, right, you will see there is no filter criteria. So this particular data page is going to return us the entire list of all the records that is present in our uh, students table, students data type. If you see there is no filter and it will fetch all the columns along with the OTB columns. So if we just run this, the one record that I have added, right, that should be uh, showing up as the result of this particular data page. Okay, let's run it. If you see PX result count is one, that means one record has been inserted. And if we go down and expand the PX results, we see there is a PX result of one. And this PX results of one is the data that I entered. So I entered email as this, phone number as this, student name as Ravi, and age as 25. So this one result, that one result is returned. That is the data that we have inserted into the data type. So similarly, there are other two data pages that Pega creates for us, which we can reuse across our uh, case type whenever we have a need to do so. Okay. So this is how you create a new data type in Pega. So this was a very basic explanation of how to add a data type into Pega, how to configure the key and how to add records to the data type. In the upcoming sessions, I'll be explaining how we are going to use the data from this data type and show it onto the UI. Okay, for today, I will wrap up the session. Hope you were able to follow this particular topic. If you have any questions, feel free to post in comments. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye.